Dresden. Saxony's capital in the southeast of Germany, with its symbol, the renovated Church of Our Lady. A short drive to the south will bring you to Glashütte, the center of the high art of German watchmaking for more than 160 years. Round about 2,500 residents can today look back on a turbulent history of their hometown. The Glashütte Original Watch Manufactory is located in the heart of the town. The building was re-inaugurated in September 2003. After more than a year of refurbishing, and has since become a clear and tangible symbol of a traditional craft's new character. Let yourself be guided through the transparent manufactory of Glashütte Original and experience for yourself what it means when we speak of handmade in Germany. Movement design. Glashütte Original stands equally for tradition and innovation in the manufacture of mechanical masterpieces. Teamwork at the computer screen. The most modern programs make precise movement design and development of great complications, such as the especially difficult flying tourbillon according to Alfred Helwig possible, as well as the duplex swan neck fine adjustment that Glashütte Original premiered. All new ideas are extensively analyzed. How new and unique is the idea and how creative is the design? How can the highest possible amount of quality and precision be realized within it? To what degree can the experience of our greatest master watchmakers of the 19th century, such as Julius Assmann, be utilized? From these beginnings, a specification booklet is created that contains detailed demands on the movement designers and the design department. That which is thought up here helps mold our new models. Glashütte Original places the highest amount of value on maintaining its more than 160-year-old tradition. For us, however, innovative products with practical additional functions and a balanced aesthetic appearance are just as important. The first sketch is always done by hand. The final design of a new watch is then created using the newest in computer technology. The first prototypes are created in close cooperation with the prototype department and new functions are optimized. The patenting process for innovations is also begun at the same time. From the conception to its market presentation, a new watch needs up to five years. Glashütte Original has its own tool-making department. This is something that also sets us apart from other manufacturers. This is where all the special tools and devices needed for watchmaking are created, such as the engraving needle seen here. To guarantee its position, tolerances of one hundredth of a millimeter must be guaranteed. A device important to watch assembly is the movement's pillar plate, which carries individual components. As in all of toolmaking, the highest precision is necessary here. This is also true for the individual fitting of tool plates, which will later be used as holders for small components that need to be finished, such as the rotor. The plate is put in position, and the milling tool is led to the workpiece with the aid of a great deal of experience. During the milling process, a lubricating liquid is used to make working the piece easier, ensuring an optimal result. After it is done, this tooling plate will be used in the finishing department for the traditional glass hutter ribbing decoration. Completely in line with the philosophy of the brand, a team of 13 toolmakers is at the ready to create special devices and tools needed, such as the one to press in pegs and jewels, the working plates for perlage, and specific screw blades. After the tools are made, the production of individual components begins. 
only with computer control technology can precision to a thousandth of a millimetre be realised, such as in the manufacture of filigreed tourbillon carriages, or as manufacturing swan neck springs, as seen here. A start hole is drilled into a piece of metal through which a fine wire made of tungsten carbide 0.05 to 0.1 millimetres in diameter is threaded. This wire is charged with up to 220 volts and the desired component is cut out in distilled water. Here we have made the ray of light visible on a larger component as it can otherwise hardly be seen by the human eye. This is how small swan neck springs are. Only 120 springs can be manufactured using this difficult process in an eight hour period. A stamping machine would need about a minute for this. One unbeatable advantage of wire spark erosion technology is its extremely precise maintenance of measurements. Furthermore, components can be ground and polished better. We are now in the department for manufacturing flat and individual components. At the moment, spring barrel bridges are being put into position that will receive their very own Glashütte Original logo. The component holder is put in place and the highly precise process begins. The unmistakable logo is perfect. On another CNC machine, base plates, cocks and bridges are created in a special watchmaking brass using a tolerance of a maximum of five thousandths of a millimetre. This CNC machine can work up to 36 components at the same time. At the beginning, these components are no more than coin-shaped rondels on movable surfaces at the beginning of the process. One operation at a time is performed on all of the components. For this, the machine needs about six hours per plate side until it is done. Step by step, the machine automatically chooses one of the up to 90 drills and milling tools from its repertoire of tools in order to complete the desired process. Here, a balance cock is fashioned with the aid of a tool that was especially made for it at Glashütte Original. Despite computer-controlled precision, personal inspection of the milling parameters remains indispensable. The pieces are checked and compared with the prescribed parameters at every step. This is how balance cocks and bridges look, ready for the rest of their journey. The movement's flat parts manufactured on CNC machines are trimmed with a special scraper. With great skill and sensitivity, the smallest unevenness on the edges, drilled holes and recesses are removed in order to guarantee a perfectly formed fit later. All of the manufactured parts are examined once again under a loop here in the measuring room. In this case, the roundness of the drillings has been checked. This is done by establishing the true measurements by video, which can be followed on the monitor. On a base plate, up to 80 measurements on the gear train bridge side and 30 on the dial side are completed. Comparative visual measurements with this profile projector are also an important part of quality control. Here, a swan neck spring is enlarged 50 times and compared to the technical drawing so that any deviations immediately become visible. Here, the depth of the individual drillings are once again examined. Precise parts are passed on after examination. The few deviants are either reworked or sorted out. Every single Glashütte Original is a unique work of art. In the finishing department, watch movements receive their beautiful traditional surface finishing. Glashütte ribbing. 
The machine created in the company's own toolmaking department applies this decoration to bridges, cocks and automatic rotors, as seen here. To apply traditional perlage, the base plate is rotated in small steps by an experienced hand. After every step, a rotating rubber peg coated with diamond powder is pushed down on the surface with even amounts of pressure, leaving a beautiful circular pattern behind. This is done by hand to ensure that every base plate remains unique with its own special nuances. The sunburst decoration applied by a single-toothed miller and a rotating diamond-coated chisel is especially radiant. This lavish decoration was already introduced to watchmaking in 1868. Hand engraving is and remains the non plus ultra of finishing. The art of the engraver is to cut a pattern into bridges and cocks without first drawing on a ready-made pattern. The engraver only applies enough pressure and removes as much material that the piece is not damaged and the technical functions are not influenced. Every movement in our manufactory is a unique piece due to the loving engraving and decorating that is done by hand. For this gear train bridge from calibre 46, an engraver needs at least two entire days. Only very few watch manufacturers afford themselves an in-house galvanic department. Glashütte Original belongs to this Elite circle. During this work-intensive process, the plates, rotors and even the hand-engraved cocks are refined with a coating of gold or rhodium. The parts are first nickel-plated in the baths, an essential step to securing a lasting gold coating. Only after this is the gold plating applied. Now the delicate recesses of the engraving are filled out with a protective lacquer under a microscope. The ensuing rhodium plating process gives the cock its shiny silvery colour. After the lacquer coating is removed, the engraving shines in gold. While the flat parts of the movement are being finished, rotationally symmetrical components are created in the company's turning department. It is part of Glashütte Original's philosophy to make even the smallest of the company's own stems, pinions, pegs and screws. The manufactured parts are so tiny most of the time that they must be collected by a fine sieve. The smallest of the screws manufactured here has a head diameter of only 0.4 mm, a thread of 0.3 mm and a slit of 0.1 mm. In the toothing department, the sometimes microscopically tiny individual parts are worked and perfected by hand. This is how spring barrels, pinions and toothed wheels are created. On the bearing pivots of the rotating movement parts, only minuscule tolerances are allowed. Therefore, the pivots must be fitted to the drillings in the jewels using a process called burnishing. This type of grinding sees that the pivots are turned between two hard metal discs. Thus, the surface of the pivot is condensed, made more resistant to wear and tear, and its tolerance is improved to a maximum of three thousandths of a millimetre. Naturally, intense examination follows on the profile projector. The celebrated quality of Glashütte Original's watches is no coincidence. The hardening department is where steel components get their resistance to wear and tear. The parts are first treated thermally and then cooled in an oil bath by shock. The tempering that follows in a vacuum oven sees that the parts do not become porous and retain their necessary springiness. Examining their degree of hardness is done with a diamond. These parts have passed the test and now proceed to the next station. 
The first little functional units are now created in the subgroup assembly. They will later be part of the entire manufacture caliber. Enormous experience and an absolute feel for the material is demanded here. Under the microscope, 18 tiny weighted screws with a thread of 0.35 mm are screwed into the balance wheel. The screwdriver used to do this is again a special tool from the company's own toolmaking department. After being riveted to the balance staff and having the plateau added, the balance must now be pushed. In doing so, the underside of the balance wheel gets a little groove milled into it, the strength of which depends on the size of the imbalance. After that, the balance and balance spring must be classified according to their oscillation behaviour so that they can be optimally paired. Only then is the balance spring added and sent to a thorough final inspection before going off to assembly. The riveting of the steel wheel stems and their pinions to their spur gears is what creates toothed wheels. The wheels are tested here for truth in the round. To do this, one needs a little puff of air, a practiced eye and, above all, a steady hand. For automatic watches, completion of the ball bearings and assembly of the rotor also takes place in the subgroup assembly. First, seven balls are positioned and the bearing added and the ball bearing pressed into the rotor plate. Now the rotor plate is added to the 21 carat gold oscillating weight. The two-tone rotor embellishes the back of the movement and serves to automatically wind the mainspring. The union of aesthetic demands and an obligation to Glasshütter's history is especially tangible in the polishing department. Tourbillon cage, index and swan neck spring seen here are brought to a high polish using a traditional tin polishing process. This is done using a tin baton with diamond powder and evenly moving it across the surface. A process that can easily take up to half an hour for a swan neck spring. For other components, such as a filigreed tourbillon cage, this can even take up to several hours. When beveling edges, as here on a three-quarter plate, Glasshütter Originals watchmakers use a traditional process. This makes it possible to file the edges to exactly 45 degrees in all positions, with the material becoming denser along its outer edges. The special tool used for this is once again an in-house design. The decorative blued screws hardly reveal the immense amount of effort they need. Innumerable gentle hand motions first bring the screws to a mirror polish with every fine little scratch removed with a great deal of patience. Now comes the tempering. With increasing warmth, the screws successively take on various yellow, brown, red and violet hues until finally the typical deep blue Glashütte original colour is created at about 290 degrees Celsius. The heating simultaneously builds a protective oxide coating. Another characteristic type of embellishment is the setting of jewels in gold beds, the so-called gold chatons. The chaton, which has been individually fit to its drilling, is brought to a mirror polish using the tin polishing process. Using elder pith, grinding dust is removed and the chaton is additionally cleansed. The chatons must be completely flat in order to be on one level with the plate's surface. With a calm hand, 
exacting eye and a special screwdriver, the blued screws are now added. This is the characteristic Glashütter three-quarter plate with beveled edges, completely in the tradition of the old masters. The Glashütter original manufactory's roots extend back to the year 1845. It was in this year that Saxon watchmaker to the royalty Ferdinand Adolf Lange brought the art of watchmaking to Glashütte. Professional colleagues such as Julius Assmann followed his vision of an independent watch manufacturer. Precise pocket watches from Glashütte won many gold medals at international exhibitions. Until this day, Moritz Grossmann has been regarded as one of the forerunners of Glashütte's watch manufacture, not only because of his own impressive pocket watches. Rather, he recognized that the international demand for Glashütte watches would also demand more and more specialized trade workers. Upon his initiative, the German School of Watchmaking was founded in Glashütte in 1878. One of the graduates of this school was Alfred Helwig, who later taught there from 1913 until 1954. He was especially committed to research. In 1920, Alfred Helwig became famous as the inventor of the flying tourbillon. Balance, escape wheel and detent spring were for the first time arranged within a cantilevered cage that made a 360-degree revolution around its own axis once every minute. In this way, the tourbillon compensates rate deviation that is caused by the Earth's gravity. The flying tourbillon was first used on the front side of the movement in Glashütte original wristwatches. The maintenance of this high art of watchmaking is an important topic at Glashütte original. For this reason, an in-house watchmaker school was created in 2002, named after the famous Glashütte instructor. The fascination of the watchmaking craft is taught by several instructors using rare historical escapement models as teaching aids. And with the help of modern video technology, even the most sensitive processes taking place within the movement's microcosm are visible in detail for every student. When an apprentice successfully graduates the program, the manufactory is waiting for the competent young watchmaker with its demanding tasks, in the experienced team of the assembly department, for example, only work done by hand, according to strict procedures, can make the movement into a complex mechanism. The individual components needed are pre-sorted into sets and assembled in units. Horological complications all the way to a perpetual calendar are thus created with great concentration in units in the assembly department. The assembly of such complicated movements demands several working days. The innovative panorama date is unique. Both numeral rings are located on one level. The otherwise usual mullion needed to visually balance the difference in height between the numerals is not needed here. Here, the disc for the leap year display of the perpetual calendar is being assembled. After assembly, all functions are examined. Especially on a perpetual calendar, both the individual changing of the date and the synchronized changing of the displays are important. Now the watch receives its unmistakable face. The hands are added to the dial. The watch is encased and the bezel as well as the front sapphire crystal are put in place. And screwed to the back with great care. During regulation, the manufacture caliber is finely adjusted. With the help of a timing machine, the watch's rate is tested in five different positions.
only now is the rotor with its oscillating weight crafted in 21 karat gold added to caliber 100. In the laboratory, up to four weeks of continuous testing at various temperatures for shock protection and, as seen here, for water resistance according to the German industrial norm DEAN. This takes place during a simulation of high and low pressure. And toward the end of the quality control process, the long-term rate behaviour of the movements is analysed on a rotating testing machine. And only after it has successfully passed all tests can a Glashütte Original be entered into the manufacturer's registry with its individual number, sent to one of our exclusive dealers and finally presented to the connoisseur waiting for it. The Zenatua Edition, classic men's watches with a demand for the modern. When the assembly department breathes life into the movement, it is a true highlight of the art of watchmaking, making the heart of every lover of mechanics to beat a little faster. Glashütte Original was the first to use the duplex swan neck fine adjustment for the sensitive fine adjustment of the movement. Two swan neck springs regulate the watch's rate and the centralization of the oscillation system, the beat, independently of each other. In the automatic movement caliber 90, or here as shown on manually wound caliber 6501, the fine adjustment adds value, enhancing the models of the panel date and star collections. The assembly of exclusive special models and editions is the task of the Atelier Workshop. Here, every master watchmaker has his or her own set of parts, assembling the entire movement from scratch. This can be up to 500 individual components. Glashütte Original has created a watch with great practical value in the Panomatic Chrono, powered by Automatic Caliber 95. The intelligent winding mechanism adjusts itself to the movement behavior of its wearer. A patented stepped gear makes a targeted transmission of the winding energy to the serially operating spring barrels possible. Even visually, the panomatic corner is striking in its novel three-dimensional dial design. Centrally, above the hour and minute displays, the chronograph second scale rises up to a second level. It is flanked by the displays for subsidiary seconds and the chronograph's 30-minute counter found on the dial's lower level. This horologically demanding masterpiece was bestowed the sought-after title Watch of the Year in 2005, as was the Pano Ritograph in 2001 with its manually wound caliber 60. 
This highly complicated watch is the first mechanical chronograph worldwide to be able to count both forward and backward. After counting down a pre-selected time interval, a triple repeater sounds, engineered by a gong fashioned from one piece of metal. A view through the microscope reveals the fascinating mechanical world of manufacture watchmaking. And a glance at its off-center dial design also explains why this watch received such high honors from an informed audience, as well as why Glashütter Original made a successful edition based upon it. Like Glashütter Original, the Saxon manufactory in Meissen can also look back on a long tradition as the oldest porcelain manufactory in Europe. Paper-thin, hand-painted dials featuring the famed blue swords and exclusive motifs today embellish select editions by Glashütter Original, whose inner values tick with finely finished movements. These special models are sought-after rarities among connoisseurs all over the world. Only 25 pieces of this filigreed, skeletonized masterpiece exist. On the occasion of the 175th anniversary of the famous Glashütte master watchmaker, the manufactory presented the Julius Assmann III, featuring one of the greatest complications in watchmaking, the flying tourbillon. A retrograde date hand and a sectoral power reserve display perfect this timepiece's impressive appearance. The case can be taken out of its wristwatch frame and be worn as a pocket watch on a chain. The Julius Assmann III and the Julius Assmann I two masterpieces of haute horlogerie. This film would like to inspire you to visit our manufactory in the heart of Glashütte. From movement design to creating tools, producing components and decorating individual parts, all the way to assembly and our special workshops, you will experience what being a manufactory means. Welcome to Glashütte Original, handmade in Germany.